we are having the double hyperconjugation and as the name is suggesting there will be uh, twice the hyperconjugation possible in the same molecule when we say twice hyperconjugation we mean to say there can be two carbon hydrogen or carbon carbon sigma bonds basically two sigma bonds would be moving in a fashion as in conjugation if there are many of the double bonds all those double bonds can be delocalized we can say for example if we have got some molecule something like this double bond double bond double bond then if we are writing the resonating structure what we can say is if this bond was moving this bond moved and at the same time this bond also moved so just like here uh, the more than one bonds we were able to move the same way hyperconjugation is also known at least in certain cases where more than one sigma bonds can be moving at the same time in the same delocalization process let's have a look how that can be possible so uh, this uh, can be made possible if we are having relatively much better electron donor groups and silicon is uh, going to be our favorite choice so uh, what we have shown here is this was the first level of hyperconjugation possible although we have been emphasizing here in, in most of our examples that hyperconjugation is taking place from carbon hydrogen bonds that's not always true it can be happening through carbon carbon bonds as well the only difference is the carbon carbon sigma bond having its electron donor ability is way smaller than the carbon hydrogen because of the uh, polar polarity or polarization in those kind of bonds what we have seen and we have seen in previous discussion that carbon silicon bond is having much greater polarity in comparison to carbon hydrogen that's why it is much better electron donor so see what is happening here although the very first delocalization what is happening here in this case that is coming from the carbon carbon bond this bond is basically a carbon carbon bond and this delocalization is not going to be very much efficient but this delocalization is being made more effective by the use of double hyperconjugation how double hyperconjugation you understand if this kind of hyperconjugation just has taking place then what we are getting we are getting this structure and there is an alkene basically formed this part is being fragmented we can say as alkene ethene is being formed but now what we are having can't we see very good possibility of hyperconjugation because silicon is there and the silicon carbon bond can be undergoing hyperconjugation much more readily than and otherwise we can say in comparison to another carbon hydrogen bond could have shown the hyperconjugation so this second hyperconjugation is kind of pushing this first hyperconjugation process this first hyperconjugation the carbon carbon bond where this is being delocalized which otherwise is very less likely to take place take, or this is wherever it is happening this is having much smaller effect than the normal alpha carbon hydrogen hyperconjugation this is being facilitated by what by this second hyperconjugation what is happening so this step plus this step both if you put together this is what we are calling as double hyperconjugation if we put it together this is what we are getting at the same time so we need to understand that this kind of delocalization is pushing this kind of delocalization to go through and ultimately we are getting these products basically this kind of delocalization is going to take place and this is how we can be getting the fragmentation reactions may be possible or this is basically how the double hyperconjugation can be operating the idea was this hyperconjugation this one which was otherwise very much less likely to take place can be made effectively possible by the presence of carbon silicon bond onto the next position